got kidnapped today. I, some woman just picked them up and started walking off with them. Speaking of dog days. All right, there's plenty of gloom going in to the dog days of August, including one bond guru's latest take paired with an earnings trend that's sounding some serious bear market alarms. Um, I like this. Jeff Gunlock, who's in charge of more than $100 billion at Double Line, <clears throat> quote, the artist Christopher Wool has a word painting, sell the house, sell the car, sell the kids. That is exactly how I feel. Nothing here looks good. The stock markets should be down massively. They should be down massi massively, but investors seem to have been hypnotized that nothing can go wrong. Nothing can go wrong. Okay, from Wall Street to Sub-Saharan Africa. <clears throat> Looking at who is this uh, foreign policy magazine? Looking at China's $100 billion in aid to Africa. Yes. This is from 2000 to 2013, nearly $100 billion in aid. Uh, aid has flowed from China to Africa, according to a recently updated database. Since 2000, China has established itself as a major donor across the continent, second only to U.S contributions in Africa. Yes. Um, take a wild guess. Take a wild guess why China has poured in, and now, you know, it's the middle of 2016, well over $100 billion into Africa. It's the same reason the U.S has your tax dollars at work. Um, okay. <clears throat> Angola, more than $12 billion. Yes. Uh, China, this is quoting uh, Yu Sun, one of these uh, China watchers, I guess. China has frequently provided low interest loans to nations who rely on commodities such as oil or mineral resources as collateral. So the, these aid, this aid, this foreign aid, what it is, make no mistake about what it is, it is low interest loans that they never expect to get paid back in money. So it's the same that they're doing down in Latin America, such as in Ecuador, is what they're doing is they're putting up these banana republic nations oil and mineral wealth as collateral for their loans. So if they can't come up with the money to pay back, it's then China just takes it out in oil and minerals. That is what they want. Um, according to this strategy, the recipient nations usually suffer from low credit ratings and have great difficulty obtaining funding from the international financial market. Can you say the World Bank and the IMF? And but China makes financing relatively available with 
certain conditions uh, since Angola is also China's largest African trading partner Wow China in turn has won favorable conditions for mining deals there uh, and don't forget infrastructure projects along with energy and transportation dominated Chinese investment in Africa and take a wild guess the coming up at the very bottom of the list for what China was investing in in sub-saharan Africa would be population reproductive health and environmental protection bringing up the bottom of the list of concerns for China okay we're gonna go from there over to our friends big oil for uh, the remainder of this rant I've already mentioned this story in my clueless moron roundup rant on Saturday uh, getting back to it here today US to speed oil and gas permits so here we have all of these goddamn clueless moron uh, limp dick mainstream environmentalists out there talking about their goddamn little uh, keep it in the ground keep it in the ground trying to get Farrakh Obama uh, in the remainder of his term and of course uh, Hillary Clinton picking up Farrakh's slack not even talking about Donald Trump and so while Barack Obama signing off there on over there in Paris and Hillary taking up the the chant about uh, how we need to save the planet by weaning ourselves off fossil fuels what do we see US officials announced plans on Thursday to speed up permitting for oil and gas drilling on federal public lands and of course Indian reservation lands to reduce delays for fossil fuel companies uh, low energy prices already have curtailed domestic energy exploration hallelujah and that has put a crimp in the budgets for the major energy producing states such as Wyoming New Mexico Colorado Alaska North Dakota and Montana where is Texas in here oh uh, which receive a substantial share of their state revenue from oil and gas activity on federal public lands so in an attempt to streamline approvals and reduce the cost for energy companies U.S. Bureau of Land Management Director Neil Korn said all drilling applications would now be filed online under the new proposal. Uh, online only permitting would allow 90% of drilling applications to be completed within 100 15 days down from the present 220 days industry re representatives welcomed the feds attempt to make permitting more efficient and said they have worked with corn's agency the BLM to fix glitches in the system is there anybody on this planet failing to understand uh, how big oil 
has this country and this planet in its pocket. You know, guys, it's just over and over again. Uh, anybody swallowing this unadulterated horseshit that Barack Obama or uh, Hillary Clinton uh, have any desire to keep fossil fuels in the ground by by banning drilling on our public lands pull your head out of your ass the only difference between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump on the subject of, uh, of drilling for oil and gas on our public lands I I at least uh, Donald Trump uh, for all you can say about him, he's not a lying sack of shit, at least as far as his energy policy is. It's just that Hillary Clinton is, is a fucking lying sack of shit on, on top of sucking Warren Buffett's dick on stage at the DNC. Jesus. Um... Uh, I... I <laughs> I like this story uh, from uh, from oilprice.com, uh, their story this week. The problem with big oil, it's too big. There you go. The problem with big oil is that it is too big. Uh, there, there you go. Uh, I won't break into that story. I, I think the headline uh, says it all. Uh, the problem with the planet is that big oil owns the planet and every politician on it. Uh, I got two more here. Now this story from the street uh, you know, I'm reading this story about one world ready or not, uh, you know, talking about these goddamn banksters behind it all. These evil bastard banksters behind it all. Behind big oil and uh, every other planet eater on this planet. Uh, and this story is kind of complicated. Uh, I can make a full rant off of it. How Wall Street made millions from Big Oil's boom and its busts. U.S. banks from J.P. Morgan Chase to Citigroup to Bank of America have become financial supermarkets, reaping juicy fees from selling stocks for distressed oil companies that were previously big borrowers. Uh, I say this is kind of complicated, um, but I'll, I'll start you off with it. Uh, le leading off with this sentence, they get them coming and going. As oil traded above $100 a barrel earlier this week, these big banks doled out more than $110 billion of loans to finance the drilling boom, all the while helping their clients borrow additional cash through bond sales. And now that oil prices have gone bust, the banks are reaping a new bounty of fees, underwriting stock sales for financially distressed energy producers, which in turn are using those proceeds to pay down their loans from the very banks underwriting the stock sales. And here is the kicker. Some of those oil companies are already taking out fresh loans, often from the same banks.